What you're about to see is a real-life story taken from the files of the police racket and bunco squads, business protective associations, and similar sources all over the country. It is intended to expose the confidence game, the carefully worked out frauds by which confidence men take more money each year from the American public than all the bank robbers and thugs with their violence. Braddock, Captain Braddock, ready. It seems to be a consensus that all confidence men prey only on city people. But this is far from being true. The rural sections of the country come in for their share, too. In fact, the case we're going to show you took place in the Midwest in the heart of the wheat country. I call this case the staff of life. And if the confidence men hadn't climaxed a local feud, they might never have been caught. The swindle itself touched many people. But to Dan Lewitt, it was almost a catastrophe. Being an agricultural agent is no cinch job. And with Dan Lewitt, it was doubly hard. Because after two years of working in Garner County, the local farmer still hadn't accepted him and his suggested methods for crop improvements. Morning, gentlemen. Mr. Dan Lewitt? Yes? My name is Winton, John Winton. Well, how do you do, Mr. Winton? And this is Mr. Al Keller. Certainly a pleasure to know you, Mr. Lewitt. Well, thank you. Is there something I can do for you? Indeed there is, something of importance. If you can spare a moment. Well, a man can always spare a few minutes. Yes, sit down, gentlemen. Thank you. Well, Mr. Lewitt, I know you county agents are busy all the time, so I'll come right to the point. Mr. Keller and I represent the National Association for the Improvement of Wheat in the United States. National Association for the Improvement of Wheat? Well, I've never heard of the organization, but... When you're talking about improving wheat crops, you're talking my language. Glad to hear you talk that way, because those are exactly the feelings of Mr. Keller and myself. You can say that again. The more wheat, the merrier, I always say. <laughs> Al gets very excited when he talks about wheat, but don't feel badly that you don't know the association. The men behind it dislike publicity. Yeah, they sure do. You see, some of these men are the nation's largest wheat brokers. Well, you don't say. And naturally, these brokers are vitally interested in the production and quality of wheat because they know better than anyone how much the world needs all the wheat the American farmer can produce. Consequently, they're continually trying to suggest crop improvements. I've been preaching that very same sermon to these hard-headed farmers around here ever since I arrived in Garner County. Well, but they're stubborn. To them, their fathers and grandfathers raised wheat in a certain way. That's good enough for them. You're absolutely right. Al and I have run into that type of thinking in 90% of our survey area. And that's why we've been able to convince our employers to do something about it. Well, that's a very excellent idea, Mr. Winton, but... Please call me John. Oh, thank you, John. As I say, it's a great idea, but what can you do about it? Well, we've already started in part of the wheat belt. We're going to hold a contest for the best bushel of wheat. Contest? We've been authorized to give a cash prize of $1,000 to the winner. It'll all be in your local papers tomorrow. $1,000 is a lot of money. Uh, where's the contest going to be held? Right here in Garnerville. The final judging will take place two weeks from Sunday. That's the last day of your county fair. Well, that's right. Well, this is very exciting news, John. Uh, but well, what can I do to help? Just tell the farmers when you're making your rounds. We want every farmer represented. Well, it sounds like a great idea. And Something I'll be mighty proud to be associated with. And that's how Dan Lewitt became innocently involved. The first person Dan Lewitt wanted to tell was Lon Swinner. Lon and Dan had been friends since he had been assigned to Garner County. And they both saw eye to eye on crop improvements. Thanks, Lon. Well, the contest sounds great, Dan. But what's more important is what you said about my crop. Oh, don't you worry about the crop, Lon. I've been from one end of this county to the other since the harvest began, and I'm telling you, you have a premium crop. There's none better. But as far as the contest is concerned, I sure need your help, Lon. Well, how can I help? Well, from what John Winton said, I have an idea that he and Keller have the other counties pretty well steamed up about this contest. I know the other county agents will all be working hard to have all their farmers enter, because it will be a feather in the agent's cap if the winning bushel of wheat comes from his county. So if I tell them about the contest, they'll stay away in droves. Oh, 
I see what you mean. We'll let it be known that I'm entering the contest and expect to win. Then they'll all enter just to show us up. That's right. And if they're all entered and you win, Barons have to sit up and take notice. By golly, we'll do it. My crop will be harvested in two more days, and we can set our plan in action. Oh, that's great. Oh, I'd better be getting along. It's getting late. Long. There's only one thing I want if we do win that contest. Anything your little heart desires. Desires one of those electric garbage disposal units. Oh, now, wait a minute. Let's not jump over the traces. That pool in China Sao out back is still a mighty fine garbage disposal unit. <laughs> I don't care. If we win, I'm going to trade that sow for a garbage disposal anyway. Honey, if we win, you can have your disposal and we'll pension off that old sow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you deserve it, Martha. Well, thanks again for another wonderful dinner. Oh, I'll get on the phone first thing in the morning and start spreading the news. Good idea. Just as soon as my crop is harvested, well, I'll come in with my entry. Oh. We'll start to work. Oh, uh, um, Witten said that the announcement will be in tomorrow's paper, so be sure and get your official blank. Don't worry. Good night, Dan. Night, Dan. Thanks for the news. Good night. Hope you get the disposal, Martha. Hi, Lon. Harvest all through? Yep, all done. I got five hand-picked bushels sitting outside in the truck. Good. I'll get down to Crawford's warehouse with you. I want to see how the wheat from the other counties is coming in. Say, uh, is there much interest in the contest? No, a great deal. Uh, but there's still a few of the more stubborn ones who won't be bothered. And those are the ones we want to get. Well, we'll get them. Let's get on down to Crawford. Okay. Oh, come with me for a minute. I want to pick up some smokes. <laughs> right. Thanks. How are you, Mr. Swinner? Fine, thanks. I'll need some things, but I'll wait till I get back. Dan and I are going down to Crawford's warehouse. I want to enter my wheat. Well, well, if it ain't the two college graduates. So you've heard about the contest? Yes, Hanson. Dan told me about it. I've got my entry outside in the truck. Well, then I reckon we plain farmers better save our energy and stay out of the contest. <laughs> if Swinner's <laughs> going to enter that pedigreed wheat of hisn. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I think you're right. After all, why go to all that bother when you haven't got a chance of winning? Oh, now, just a minute. Are you trying to say our wheat ain't as good as yours? I'm not saying anything. You're the one that doesn't want to enter the contest. Listen, Swinner. We don't like smart alecks around these parts. And don't think you and your crony are going to talk us out of entering our wheat. And when the judging's done, well, I reckon we'll know then who has the best wheat. Yeah, I reckon we will. Come on, Dan. Let's get on down to Crawford's. sacks of wheat. You've already got plenty of competition. Oh, there's Crawford. Hey, Crawford. <laughs> it's Dan Lewitt and Lon Swinner. We thought we'd drop around and see if you're getting any entries for the contest. Entries? Why, at the rate they're rolling in, I reckon my warehouse will be bulging at the seams. Well, a thousand dollar prize isn't to be sneezed at. How's it look for quality? From that that spilled from the sack, some of the finest I've seen. Well, it should be. I imagine every farmer has hand harvested and graded out his best bushel. Bushels, you mean, Dan? There ain't been a single entry that's been under five bushel. That'll take at least a week to judge all that wheat. How do they figure to handle it? Well, Mr. Winton says he's going to start the preliminary judging on Monday. Then on Sunday at the fair, he's bringing a couple of experts down from Chicago. They'll judge the finals. You going to have an entry? You bet. Got five bushels outside in the truck. Is it all tagged? Sure is. And here's your receipt. Just uh, dump the bags on the platform on the outside. I'll have one of my helpers haul her in the warehouse. Fair enough. I'll see you Sunday. Yes, a county fair is an exciting event, with everyone bent on having a day of fun. There's always the midway, rides, and of course, the soccer games, both little and big.
Let's hurry, Martha. We'll miss the judging. Isn't it wonderful? Well, we'll see it all right after the judging is over. John Redding. Ralph Parsons. Silas Hansen. Thomas Stout. I thought you'd never get here. Have they called my name? Not yet. Clem Fulton. Lon Swinner. William Bocum. Well, you just made it. Those were the 25 entries selected by our judges brought down from Chicago for the finals. Of those 25, all but three have been eliminated. Those are the ones you see here on the platform. Those three are William Balcom, <laughs> Silas Hansen, <laughs> and the third bushel to be judged in the finals is that of Lon Switter. <laughs> and now let's get on with the final. Entry number one. Weight, 68. Entry number two. Weight, 66 and a half. Number three. Weight sixty three. The winner of the thousand dollar cash prize. Lon Swinner. <laughs> I knew you had the best bushel of wheat. I knew it. Well, go on, winner. Get your prize money. I guess I better. You Lon Swinner? Yes, sir. Congratulations. You grow a fine bushel of wheat. Here's your prize money. $1,000 in United States currency. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Say there. Yes, what can I do for you? I just want you to know I don't think you or your judges know a gal darn thing about judging wheat. Well, I'll admit that I'm not qualified to judge, but these two gentlemen from Chicago are the best in the business. Oh, yeah? Well, how am I to know that? Very easily. I can show you their records if you so desire. Well, maybe so. Anyway, I didn't win, so I want my five bushel of wheat back. Well, I'm sorry, friend. If you'd read the rules, you could see that was impossible. I don't know about any rules. I just want my wheat. I'd like to accommodate you, but the association couldn't stand the expense of returning everyone's wheat. So they made a blanket ruling. You'll find it all in the contest rule. Now, if you'll excuse me, I got work to do. I still say none of you know anything about judging wheat. Hi, champ. Come in and take the weight off your feet. Morning, Dan. Well, how do you feel now that the excitement's all over? I still can't believe it. Oh, I'm glad for you, Lon. I'm glad for myself, too. You know, some of these hard heads might accept a little advice now. You bet they will. In fact, I saw what looked like a delegation coming out of Sam's store. Oh, were they coming this way? I think so. Well, I'd better look businesslike. Oh, Lon, you don't know what this means to me. I guess I'm finally going to be accepted. Well, you sure deserve it. Uh oh, here they come. Good morning, gentlemen. Uh, come here to make yourselves comfortable. Sorry I haven't got enough chairs for all of you. Good morning, Silas. I don't shake hands with no crook. I don't understand. Now, wait a minute, Hanson. What kind of talk is that? You keep out of this, Swinner. We'll deal with you later. Deal with me? For what? We figured you're both tarred with the same brush. Now, wait a minute, Silas. I don't know what you're driving at, but make your explanation fast or get out. 
talking kind of high-handed, doesn't he? It sure does. What we want to know is, how much did you and Swinner make out of the contest? What are you talking about? You know I won a thousand dollars. Dan never made a cent. Oh, yeah? Then what's happened to all that wheat? I don't know. It's still probably in Crawford's warehouse. Hmm. Crawford's warehouse is as empty as the fairgrounds. All that wheat has been sold. Sold? Almost 10,000 bushels of wheat was sold out of that warehouse and brought a premium price of $3.40 a bushel. Why, that's more than $30,000. Correct, Mr. Swinner. And all the money it cost them was $1,000. Oh, but that seems incredible. Where is the money? We figured you could tell us that. Somebody has made over $30,000 at our expense. But I didn't make a cent out of the contest. All I tried to do was help. We don't believe you. From the way you got chummy with them two city slickers, we figured you did right well, and Swinner too. Why, if you weren't such an old coot, I'd make you eat those words. Don't you dare lay your hands on me or I'll have the law on you. And I'll tell you something else. We're holding a Grange meeting tomorrow night to decide whether to fling you both in jail or run you clean out of the county. Gentlemen, please. I'm not guilty of any of your accusations. Well, all I can say is, if that's what they teach you in college, I'm mighty glad I didn't go past the third grade. So that's the story, Captain Braddock. What can I do? Tell me, aside from Silas Hansen and his cronies, how does the rest of the town feel about the contest? Well, the ones I've talked to don't worry about the money. After all, it only cost them a few bushels of wheat. But I guess no man likes to think he's been made a sucker of. What time is this Grange meeting tomorrow night? Well, they generally start about 7.30. Do you think there is anything you can do? I don't know. Oh, I, I don't care for myself because I imagine the way people feel, I'll have to leave the county anyway, but... I sure don't want Lon and Martha to have to pull up stakes. They work too hard. Look, you go on back to Garneville. I've got some checking to do. I'll try and make it down to the Grange meeting tomorrow night. And thanks for coming. Thank you, Captain. And I tell you that Dan Lewitt is nothing but a downright crook who tricked us all. And I'm not so sure about his crony. And I say to you, we should run him out of this county. Now, just a minute, Silas. I told you I was innocent of all charges, and you have absolutely no proof to the contrary. Oh, so it's proof you want, eh? Well, then tell me, wasn't it you who knew all about the contest before it even came out in the papers? Yes, but only because I'm counting... And you're supposed to be our farm advisor. Didn't you tell us to enter? That's true. But I thought it would be beneficial to everybody. Oh, and if it's more proof you want, it was your crony who won the thousand dollars. Now, just a minute, everybody. I'd like to say a word, if you don't mind. Then? Who is this? Another of your city slicker friends? No. This is Captain Braddock of the Racket Squad. I went to his office yesterday afternoon and told him the whole story. Even though you don't believe me, maybe you'll believe him. Gentlemen, there's been some very harsh language passed around here tonight, and only because of ignorance on everybody's part. And none of us like to think that we've been made out of sucker, and we'll go to any lengths to blame it on someone else. But as far as this wheat contest is concerned, I've been checking since Dan came in to see me yesterday. And believe me, Dan Lewis is as innocent as any of you sitting out there. But Winton and Keller are as much thieves as if they had stolen money out of your pockets. But I need your help to prosecute. Captain Brander, we believe what you tell us. But for the few bushels of wheat that it cost each of us, most of us would just rather forget about the whole thing. Am I right, friends? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're wrong, friends, and I'll tell you why. Now, it's true that each one of you only lost a few bushels of wheat. But collectively, you and the rest of the farmers that were swindled lost $30,000. Now, if you're not interested for yourselves, just think of what $30,000 means to your children. Why, you could build a playground or start an educational fund. There are hundreds of constructive things that you could do with that kind of money. So once again, I ask for your help. Captain, what you say makes a lot of sense. How can we help? By all of you signing this paper, 
When I get enough signatures, I can prosecute Winton and Keller for grand larceny and put them away for a long time. Otherwise, I can only fight them on a petty count. And it won't be long before they'll be able to work their swindle somewhere else. Well, I don't know about the rest of you, but I am first going to apologize to Dan Lewis, and then I'm going to sign that paper. I'm sorry, Dan. I had my operators back the other company. The farmers were very cooperative. Winton and Keller won't be seen in the rural sections of the country for a long time. And Dan Lewitt has become so busy, he's had to get himself an assistant. But I think the happiest person of all is Martha Sweater. Yes, Lon bought her that garbage disposal and retired the sow. But friends, confidence men prey on the young and the old, the rich and the poor, any time, anywhere. So don't you be an easy mark for their schemes. If you have any suspicions that a racket is being perpetrated, run, don't walk to the nearest phone, and get in touch with your local authorities. Because never forget, it could happen to you. I'm closing this case now, or rather the courts will, but there'll be others, because that's the way the world is built. Remember, there are people who can slap you on the back with one hand and pick your pocket with the other. And it could happen to you. Kit Squad next week, same time, same station.